Okay, so hello everyone. I'm going to tell you a tale about how you can create uh, uh, model trains, but for web, so not in the real world. So um, I'm going to start with uh, telling you something about me. I'm coming from Romania. I graduated uh, geodesy in Bucharest, so it's not geography. And uh, uh, I discovered that the earth is not so perfectly round as you, as you guys uh, maybe think it is, but it's not. So, so uh, it's more like that. I studied the geoids, so the shape of the earth in given all the conditions and the, and the, and the factors outside. And then, uh, yeah, I worked for, for two years in cadastral surveying, but I didn't see myself working and continuing in that field. And uh, I was teaching myself programming. And uh, yeah, learning, uh, learning uh, a lot of web programming, but going into mostly into the geo web programming area. So all of my, all of my uh, uh, implementations had a bit of geo. And uh, uh, from 2007, I, I moved to, to, to Switzerland, to Zurich. I'm working at, uh, as a software engineer at the uh, Yellow Pages uh, Switzerland. So um, about hobbies, so programming is one of them. You saw it uh, already. Uh, and uh, another one is, is maps. I'm a, I'm a map addict, and uh, this is a beautiful uh, Swiss Topo maps. The, the Swiss Topo is the equivalent of, uh, of uh, Ordnance Survey here, uh, here in, in UK. And uh, yeah, I, I really li love uh, the, the paper maps from, from Switzerland. They are, they, are, they, are, they are pioneers in this field, and yeah, you can see it's just beautiful. So I'm a map addict, and also Subject of today talk, I'm a, I'm a train buff, train spotter. Here is, a, here is a, a, a special place in Switzerland called Landwasser Viaduct. Um, next, uh, so motivation behind this project, those, those two, the, the hobbies, you saw it already, but yeah, the, the Switzerland has one of the, one of the most amazing uh, public transportation system in the whole world. So which one, one of you were traveling in Switzerland? Not the, okay, all of them, all, okay, good. So yeah, you know that already, so I guess, yeah, it's one of the densest, it's punctual, so yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like crazy. So yeah, I, I uh, it was, it was, uh, how about we, we see, we see all the trains on, on one single map and uh, adding a bit of motion. So, so uh, yeah, besides that, there were also some, some technical engineering uh, things in, in Switzerland, so, Maybe if you if you draw through the Alps, you, you notice a lot of uh, lot of loops in the tunnels, and those are like engineering technique stuff. Like the the railroad is trying to get gain to gain weight without using a cogwheel, is doing some crazy loops in the tunnels. So yeah, it was okay. Let's see those on the maps to see how how, how they look. And uh, yeah, it looks like that in the reality. Google even has a street view for trains on that area because it's a UNESCO heritage. So yeah, it's it's. It's pretty an amazing place. And in the winter, by the way, you, you can sledge this. So you, you go by the sledge all, all the way down. So it's pretty cool. Um, next, so uh, the Swiss Trains uh, project, I'm going to show you straight uh, the, the demo. So to see how it looks uh, more or less today. So basically, if you were already in the room, they, like the, this is the, the Zurich main station. I'm going to zoom out a bit to have a bit of more overview. And yeah, those are dots animating on a map, all kind of uh, information. This is a Regio Express. This is a S-Bahn like here in uh, the, the normal commuter train in, in Zurich, but also are like longer trains like Interregio, even some Intercity. Yeah, you can see, you can click information, get about it, like to see where it goes. You can click and, and, uh, and arrive to that station, come to satellite, see some information, which trains are coming, what is this train? Tap on it, it, it's there. You can even follow it, by the way. So, so that's, that's, a, that's a feature that yeah, a lot of people like it. And I even tested in the, in, the, in the field, and it really works. So the train was there. And, uh, and uh, basically, so that's a tunnel. And, uh, and uh, yeah, there is, a, there is also a lot of uh, 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 heavy imagery, like the satellite imagery. You see it, it's moving, and sometimes Google banned me in the beginning for, for having, uh, like, fetching, acting as a crawler, but it wasn't a crawler, it was just this, this movement, quick movement of the trains. Clicking on another station, let's see, sort of turn, another station, you see, uh, a radio just left, and zoom out a bit. Basically, that's whole Switzerland. At e any moment in time, uh, there are about uh, 700, 800 uh, unique uh, trains. And 
And basically, uh, the, the nice thing about Switzerland is that uh, it is so small and it's so it has such a dense, uh, such a dense uh, network of trains. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing for for this country. Um, coming, yeah, I think that's it for the demo part. I'm gonna switch back to to my slides. So. So here we go. You saw. So um, now, the, oh, everyone was asking at that moment. So, are live positions, <laughs> and of course they are. No, they are not. They are. They are, uh, they are just interpolation uh, based on the timetables. And here is is just uh, really really simple illustrated. So given uh, a start uh, and the uh, end position A and B of the train and then an intermediary track from two station and I know the time, the current time, I know the timetables between those two stations, I can interpolate and then project my, my train on the, on the line. So it's simple thing, the train goes with a constant speed uh, and it's always on time. And if you prove it to the reality, 99 or 95 percent, it's always on time because it's Switzerland, you know, so if you have a four minutes delay, it's always exceptional. You know, so, so yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, next, the the how that that the implementation leads into the how to a, to a higher <coughs> to a higher abstraction level. There are two there are two databases. There is one a graphical one containing of uh, uh, containing stations and trucks, and there is a textual one. So let's let's dive into detail for each of them. First first one is uh, is having. Um, uh, dots. The dots are, are the stations and the, and the lines, and um, basically this is Switzerland has 5,000 uh, kilometer. The, the, the network had had this uh, had this size, and uh, it was in 2006. So at the end of 2006, I was asked about this uh, about this project first, and I was looking for data. And uh, it turned to be that it was hard to get. OpenStreetMap wasn't so good, didn't have all the data. And if you want it uh, from a public authority like cadastral service, would cost you like an arm and a an leg. So uh, guess what? Uh, I was loving digitizing previously in my in my previous uh, in my previous company. So uh, I was drawing myself the whole the whole network based on the based on the Swiss topo maps. And uh, the, it turned to be like a one week or two weeks uh, effort with, uh, with, uh, together with my wife who did that and uh, arranged it. So it was, it, was, it was pretty challenging. So that was one of the first challenging. And then stations added to the, to the, to the, to the plan. That was 2007 and on the vector side. So next part was the timetables. As you can imagine, so yeah, open data at that moment, it wasn't a big movement. Switzerland, it's, it's Crazy because it's like fed it has a federal system and, and there are some uh, there are some uh, cantons that they are not allowing to give data or there are some regions some regions of those trains that they don't want to give data so it's it's a it's a it's a big topic so no data also available however the Swiss Federal Railways company uh, they had putting the data all all the data in fact it was available on the website and they were even inviting for crawling it so. So there were there were companies in Switzerland doing that. So I joined the club. <laughs> so so I built I built this this web crawler that was taking basically was interrogating each station that I have it from the from from uh, from the map, asking for which services are departing for that station, and and uh, request all the pages in one day. So it was like ma maybe ten pages for Zurich, maybe two pages for Bern and stuff like that, and each each uh, service had the list of, uh, of all the stops inside. And then I store that in, again, it's a, it's a highly simplified database, what you are seeing here. That, so there is a station table and there is a vehicle table and those are joined with the with stops, with the stops table, which led up to, this, to these figures in the end. So around 1,800 stations in Switzerland, remember it's, 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 a, it's a small country, and 13, more than 13,000 uh, uh, trains. In for one single day in Switzerland, so so that led to to, to a big amount also of, of stops, and <coughs> that that was the prerequisite. So those two databases were the prerequisite to to build uh, to build the the first version. 2007 March, that was launched. This is the version that we are also seeing under that domain today, and uh, it's 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 running like that. 
it has like also the train tracks, also the, the trains, the stations, everything is there. The, the, there were some glitches inside this version that, that uh, <coughs> I'm gonna tell you about them later. So remember, so 2007 was this, this milestone and then just want to check my presenter notes. And then <coughs> uh, what happened? I, I moved to Switzerland, but I didn't forget Romania. So I built the same thing also for Romania. Romania has the same length uh, of, of railroad tracks, so 5,000 uh, kilometers, but has 10 times less trains, like per 1,500 1, in one single day. And it's five times bigger than Switzerland. So you can make the scale. So Switzerland is somewhere here. What you saw before, it, it was fitting somewhere here. So just to make an idea of, of how, how, how big are, how dense is, is, the, is the network in Switzerland. Then <coughs> also during uh, this time, so uh, between 2007 and 2009, I was improving the, um, the, the crawler and even enabling for all the stations in Switzerland. So I started with, with a discovery mode. There is a, there is a feature, if I can go back, there is a feature on, uh, on, on the Swiss federal website that you can query for all the stations around it. And it gives you a maximum 50. But then if you take in the next iteration the next station and you do another query, then you end up discovering more and more and more and more. And then you, leave, you, 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 you reach, so that's all the stations in Switzerland are around uh, more than 20,000. 20, and uh, yeah, there is a there is a big there is a big amount also of stops. There is a funny note here: cable car you see is red. So cable cars are more than than uh, yeah I don't know. Uh, let's say trains. Why? Because in ski resorts they have for each gondola that runs every minute they have an entry in the database. So if, if you go to the website, to the SBB website, and you say Matterhorn, uh, whatever, Cervinia, you're gonna see, you're gonna see there an entry for each gondola. So it's pretty crazy to see those numbers after crawling their data. And visualizing them was also a challenge. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I want to show you quickly maybe uh, the website from SBB, it had this, these nice features that to understand why it was so easy. And they inviting us for crawling so I'm just going to pick up a, a random station here in, in, uh, from, from the application. Burn, go to SBB website. And go here to Abfart. I should switch to English. OK, so departures and arrival, right? So just pasting a station here, even without auto-completing, ah, trying without auto-completing. So we can get the departure. So they were inviting us to, to get the data and they were saying, so be nice with us, doing uh, at, the at the night time, identify your crawler. So it was an open, an open thing. And because those guys, they were depending on, on, external, on external services that they couldn't uh, touch at that moment. And uh, today is another story I'm gonna quickly mention uh, later on. So coming back to the, to the slides, you saw the the stations. And then <coughs> 2009, another milestone. So what, what if, uh, so working my, at my company then, uh, local.ch, what if we do the same thing for trams and we add a bit of, you know, Let's see the trams, but also live trams, you know. So uh, the, the feature is not anymore there, unfortunately, but I have a video, a YouTube video saved here. I should play it here. It works, good. So those are the, those are the, the trams, the trams lines in Switzerland, uh, in, sorry, in Zurich, there are around 20, 20 lines, but many services, so each minute here in, each second, each 10 seconds in, in, in Zurich uh, main station area, it's, it's like crowded. You, you can see many, many trams. And if you zoom in and zoom in more, you can see like real trams animating. The, 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 the trucks weren't so, so yeah, you see this comes from this direction. It's like UK style, you know, so the other way around. But yeah, you know, so, so it, was, it was a good accepted, uh, it was a good accepted uh, uh, implementation. And then, uh, yeah, zooming again, 
going back to the Turing main station. Can you even make it? Yeah, so, so it was there. Zooming in again. Uh, many tramps, as you can see. Again, simulated, simulated schedule, but a lot of people, they thought, oh, it's live. We have transponders on, that, uh, on, the, on, those, uh, on those tramps. And look, this is faster and so on. So it was pretty, pretty um, uh, good feedback that we got from, from this. Uh, next. We, we did it, so the thing is that we did that, uh, that implementation together with not only trams, but also showing number of passengers inside <laughs> and webcams from, from, the, from, the, from the tram. And yeah, uh, the thing is that so passengers were done via some weight mechanism. That, no, okay, I'm, I'm joking here. So it was launched on 1st of April. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, we got quite, quite, quite nice feedback, but also like people that were getting in for good and asking privacy matters, you know? So yeah, why do that? Look, people here in the tram. This is a picture from a China tram. So <laughs> cre creative commons, uh, creative commons implemented. Anyway, so it, it was a fun project to do it. And uh, that was the first, uh, first step uh, ahead, uh, going in the direction of having scale model train vehicles on, on one map. Then, <coughs> as I said before, the, the first version had some, some glitches. I'm going to go in detail for, for each of them. So uh, client JavaScript was, was a mess. I implemented all, almost everything by myself. No libraries at that moment. They were like, I think prototype was there or something like that. But yeah, it was also discovery mode. So learning and implementing uh, Ajax calls by myself, custom, ja uh, custom JavaScript libraries, uh, for, for geometry, no, no, no existence. So I had to like doing my, my own implementation for 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 projecting uh, trains on the on the polylines and stuff like that. So today is done differently. So yeah, I'm using some. Uh, of course, you you know jQuery and yeah, uh, Google provides some some extensions to their API like uh, like for geometry and to do all the all the maths that you need. Then uh, another thing, it was too slow. You don't want to know how it was that on IE, IE6, you know, quirks so crazy. I, I even didn't bother to implement like, you know, uh, alpha transparency stuff. I, 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 I really didn't care on that. And here is just a, a screenshot from IE6 because the, the trains weren't re rendering anymore because whatever happened. So, and mobile, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. So yeah, today, uh, today uh, that, that thing was done on, uh, on, the, on the client. So all the lines were under on the client. It was 5,000 kilometers of lines, which were about 2,000 poly lines. And then uh, 1,800 stations, all divs on one map trying to zoom out. No way. So uh, I delegated this to, to, to Google Fusion Tables, which was launched in 2009, 2010. I, I, I don't remember the date, but uh, uh, late 2010, I, I, I moved that and delegated all the heavy lifting of, of rendering those lines that were delegated to, to the cloud, right? So another thing here, when you're clicking on one train, if I can go back, if you're clicking on one train and then get information and then pan, you will get like a loading spin off wheel that, you know, it was, it was pretty, pretty uh, not, not, so, not so nice. So I was blocking the UI with, uh, with an engineering bug. So wha wha what happened then? I, I took the opportunity to, to, to move away from, from this, to slowliness. And uh, integration between those databases, the textual and the, and the graphical one, we're done with some commercial tools. I use GeoMedia Intergraph, maybe if you are in the GIS field, you, you know, you heard about it. For getting the data from textual and also building topology and everything, I use FME, which is transforms any vector to any vector, but it was, again, costing an arm and a leg. I used it at my previous company, and I couldn't use it anymore later. And same, like for having in the database, it was uh, access, don't ask me why, yeah, it was that choice at that moment, 2006, so yeah, I moved away from it. So, so today is done, uh, so all the, all the um, uh, drawing is, is adjusting in, in uh, quantum GIS, and also, also the um, drawing of the lines, if I have a new line, let's say, or stuff like that, I'm using my custom build tools using the either Google Maps uh, or uh, open layers for, for Switzerland. And uh, yeah, database SQLite and GDAL, OGR, OGR to, to, trans to transform the, the features. So no, no more commercial, right? So here is a nice, nice table that rounds up everything. But the main, the, one of the, the big change, it was that it was released under, under the public domain. So it's on GitHub from 2000 <coughs> 2011. 
And before that, because I was a one-man show, so control Z was my undo, was my power, right, to, to do to do changes to my code, versioning, data versioning in my in, in, in this project. So it's still there, it's, it's saved, it's now under Git uh, GitHub IT, it's not published. So I, I keep it to always refer back to to my early days in this uh, in this area. And um, 2011, I did a relaunch. You saw that already. I started the presentation with it. But also, it was another feature that made me to 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 approach another city. Google was launching um, oblique imagery, which was pretty pretty nice uh, for for most of the cities in Switzerland. And uh, Zurich wasn't there, so I chose another city. Lausanne was there, and Lausanne was looking like that. And when we were switching to satellite view, it's this nice uh, view of the building, and uh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it and felt like in, in SimCity, if you guys play SimCity. I'm gonna make a small demo of this. Try now. So yeah, it looks like that, that's, that, that's Lausanne. Those are the vehicles running, you can see them, yeah, maybe, maybe add them even, even on the map would be next step. And yeah, you can even rotate. Yeah, it's just beautiful, so yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it and I felt like the, the boy in me, the kid in me was, 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 was crazy about it, you know. And yeah, uh, again, li is it live data, blah, all the questions. And uh, it, it, was, oh, it was pretty interesting implementation. You, you, as you zoom out, you don't see it anymore. But yeah, I really hope uh, Google is not going to kill this view. It's, it's, uh, it's still there, so yeah, keep it there, please, because yeah, I, I, can, uh, I can still have it there. Uh, next, back into slides. I'm doing it time, seven minutes left, right? So, I tried to edit the presentation, in fact. Okay, good. Then I had a break, a family break, because I became a father. And that kept me busy, and it still keeps me today busy. No worries. But I was also busy raising my kid to be the next transporter in the family, right? <laughs> Remember that photo before? Okay, it's there. So, I'm pretty doing a good job here, I think, so, so yeah. <laughs> However, 2013 came with a more motivation. So how about if you have stations like this one and you see trains and it was this project of early construction. Early construction is one of the, yeah, uh, it has a lot of transit from the point of view of trains. It's like Clapham Junction in, in, in London. I, I visited like two days ago. Amazing, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was, how about I see like those trains, like, like the trams, like one vehicle, but even each coach and each locomotive, right? So I was ending up building those things, which are coaches and locomotives, rotating them in, in, uh, in, uh, in Photoshop or with, with a custom script, and uh, ending up with 360 version. Each angle had a version for, for, uh, for an icon. And then when the heading was changing of, for the train, I was, I was putting them on the map. So basically, The demo looks like that. Yeah, you can see trains coming right in the station, like right on this platform. That's an intercity going to the, to the airport. This one goes to the, to the Turin main station and I'm gonna stop right here in the station. So it should arrive, zoom out please. And other intercities go into Zurich Hauptbahnhof. You can even follow the, 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 the train. So stay with it on the tracks. You can accelerate and even see some other trains coming around. So, so that, that would be exploring the area as a trainer there. It was pretty, pretty awesome for me to, to, to see that. So, so yeah. That, that is uh, 2014, uh, 13, sorry, in the beginning, a nice year is coming from Switzerland, from, uh, from the airport. And going back to the slides, that was, that was uh, 2013 with a demo, you saw the, the trains going, and then 
early in 2014, so this year I released even a plugin, a G GTFS plugin. You have uh, GTFS data, just put in a folder, run some, a bunch of, uh, of uh, Ruby scripts. It's uh, open source, by the way. And then you, you just see it. This is San Francisco uh, showing the, the network of San Francisco straight from the, from the GTFS data set, as you can see here. So yeah, again, pretty big one. Hopefully gonna load, yes. You can even zoom to see one at the moment. Following it, you can see that the network is not so good and it's not so polished because it comes from, from, or from those guys and uh, I, didn't, I didn't have time to polish it, of course, it's a, it's a crazy project. But you can even go to, with some luck, we can see an F tram going straight to the station. So those are underlined, by the way. The, the, the tracks and yeah there are there are some other some other small vehicles some some gems even the famous cable car so California this is California line anyway so that was that was the GTFS implementation so uh, it works pretty well so I try with several data sets there are some even if you don't have the 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 shapes dot instead which defines the polylines the script is smart enough to just connect the stations and you still have an overview of how is the data so you can do it immediately right so that was that and uh, lessons uh, got from this project so yeah I, I push my passion sometimes to obsession mode so it was me as a kid wanting to play with those those strings I was poor I, I didn't have chance to have something like that home I always went to some some friend of mine asking for uh, for uh, hey can I play with your train and he was saying he's there he's there you know go and play leave me alone <laughs> so something like that and then it was the kid again uh, some some years later trying to, to play with them again but in the browser right so again, uh, programming, another thing. So always adopting uh, technologies, be curious about it, exploring, nev never never stop doing that, you know? So it, it's pretty cool. Maps again. <laughs> yeah, cr I, I, I'm gonna, yeah, probably today I'm gonna have to get an ordnance survey map of this area to, to learn about this more. And uh, yeah, uh, anytime I, I, I keep a map, even like this is the Southern Railways uh, map, I, I'm, I'm feeling like, okay, it's something that I, 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 I feel it, you know? And uh, <coughs> yes, 2015, what comes depends again on that little project that you saw in 2012 that appeared, but uh, some improvements, a bunch of improvements, so the trains maybe are not so, so nicely animated. So maybe I want to add some, some bit of, uh, of, uh, of touch there, some OpenGL maybe implementation, I don't know, or native iOS or Android, I have to see. But it's not because the, the mission statement in the beginning when I started this project and continued the project in 2011, it was to have it uh, to make the, the Swiss Federal Railways to release the data, right? To put to some pressure, look what you can do. This is for train enthusiasts. And I'm getting always mails from train enthusiasts asking me, hey, how did you do that? And stuff like that, I, I, I love that. But also there are people that are, the, the real use case is to find departures, right? And stuff like that, and to see which, which has delays and so on. So real applications. And that you can get only with, with open data, uh, and uh, and public transport data that is on the public domain and uh, currently it happened that so even though there is not a gtfs data straight it's coming uh, it's coming uh, a data set from hafas hafas it's a company in, in germany that is doing that for switzerland for germany for austria even and so the same format for belgium so it's a, it's a it's an industry standard but the text files you don't want to know how how they are anyway so there, there is you need some some paradigm shift and yeah so to, to 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 get into that converter but is done so there is a half as to gtfs converter it's working and now they have the data so right now the project is as a hobby so unless i'm i'm finding a, a, a real motivation i'm not pushing hard so basically that was it thank you very much for attending my twitter handle vasile 23 or vasile.ch my website i'm happy to take questions thanks Very impressive. Any questions from the audience? Um, yeah, so it's an open source project. Um, what's been your experience of that in terms of contribution? It has, it I'm going to hit now GitHub uh, to show you. It has a lot of forks and a lot of starring, but unfortunately, not too much contribution. Translate my depth, really. So, um, 
uh, I'm suspecting there are a lot of railroad enthusiasts who, who got that. However, they were blocked a bit into some technical implementation. I wasn't always the biggest like reply, especially with the late situation. But, uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'm supporting how, how, how much I could those guys that they wanted to do their, their own stuff. Also, there, I saw uh, implementation that were done internally or stuff like that. So guys were, were taking, uh, but even others, they were copying it or doing their own implementation because sometimes, you know, in, 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 in programming, is bad. <laughs> It's reinventing the wheel is much better sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, even SBB, the, the federal website, they, has, uh, they had an implementation of themselves. I'm not going into details. Go there and take your own conclusions. But, uh, but otherwise, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's there. And uh, I'm, let's say, a main contributor. And some dude from Netherlands was, was helping me with some stuff. Otherwise, yeah, it's not like, uh, I'm not saying those are fake. But uh, activity is coming from, from enthusiasts mostly. Yeah. Andreas. You mentioned the, so it's now available as open data, not as forward. And should be, should be like here. Yeah. The other source companies. Exactly. So basically, that's the official website from from uh, from SBB, where you can uh, where you can get the the address, and then this company was was building the the tool. So yeah. And how about the live position? Is there any movement on that? So Because they have the data, I know. Yeah, SBB is a big company again, and with uh, with the normal train tracks. They have data, and it was available on some interfaces, some APIs. However, opening all the data for all the all the small companies with small trains, maybe they don't have GP, uh, GPS uh, or whatever things at, at the tracks level. Probably not is not a, at the big level of the country, but for the main tracks, for sure, it's available somehow. Not via an, an, a public a public API for sure. They have their internal tools, so to, to do that. Yeah. The pioneers in this, Netherlands is, is a pioneer in this field because the, the guy that was hiring me at that moment, he was from Netherlands and he wanted a clone of the initial version of, of, of that train map. You, you release it, it's, it's available in the Dutch version from that person. Yeah, uh, that, so that was so, something like that, yeah. And it was, yeah, that was, I'm always so like I'm seeing Netherlands as the as the pioneers in this field because yeah, they already. No, but uh, for as far as I know, that one uh, has um, uh, it's not the live positions of the trains. It's the it's the, the, the timetable and edits. They have an API with delays, so they say this this train is delayed by so many minutes. I think it's live, so, so they have a real time GTFS data set. So if you go to the website, there oh, is from the, from the, yeah. from the Dutch rail. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And there is a contractor that is doing for them all the aggregating of the data and putting the. So it's it's a real time GTFS, I'm protocol buffers and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. GTFS, by, by the way, everybody knows what GTFS actually is. So it's Google, uh, not Google, General Transit, right? Field spec. I always say Google, but it came from Google. But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, so it's uh, exchange uh, exchange uh, format for public transport data. It's not a database, so it's a collection of uh, basically it's just a collection of uh, of text files. And they reside in this format. And some of them, they, you have to implement them, all of them. But you see, like shapes, for instance, you don't have, so it's optional. But that one, I can deduct from the from the source. So you have the same, more or less, the same structure. So like vehicles and uh, and uh, stops and then routes and then some calendar. It's of course it covers the whole year or the, or the whole period. So it it has to be a bit more complicated than my than my implementation, which is again a hobby. An interesting project would be a map of all the countries who make data available. So those guys from from GeoOps, they are doing that, in fact. So they are plugging. They have their own implementation for uh, for I think it's a tracker. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
So you see, and then they have an overview of who, who has uh, that top open layers, by the way. So who has GTFS data open and stuff like that. Let's go to UK, in fact. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the same thing you see, you see the, the track and stuff like that. And speaking of uh, Netherlands, real time, yes. Yeah. So, so, is, so, is, so is okay. okay. Yeah. So, any other questions? Uh, yeah. uh, I was curious uh, if you show the, the, the high level, the, the, the zoomed in version of the station, you see the trains going on certain tracks. How do you figure out which tracks they are supposed to go on? Because I'm a transporter, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, you have that for every station in the. No, it's, it's just, just so again. Okay. Uh, but going back to, <coughs> to Zurich, right? Okay. If I still have time, I think three minutes I should still yeah. have, right? So Zurich Habe. You can see like those things here, mm -hmm. right? And yes. So basically I was there having lunch close. Let me okay. It should be, the thing is that uh, I didn't go too much into detail in the station because I didn't want to have an overlapping of the, of the, of the orthophoto, but let's accelerate it a bit. Come on, come on. Hey, it, it blows my, my uh, density thing. Oh, it's uh, 45, so it's much. Ah, yeah, exactly. There is, <laughs> a, there, there is a tact. Each, each hour there are many trains in, 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 in Zurich Havenhof, but still, okay. okay, something is coming. That was a Regio Express, one is leaving, and then there should be even more. So you were basically sitting there noting which track train goes Yeah, on. there is also like a, there is a, there is a, an interesting thing with the, with the tracks that you notice when you, uh, when you are on the tracks. So those lines, right, that are going here, there is a S-Bahn coming. So it's coming on this side. You, you might say it's on right side of the road. So it's like British system because mm -hmm. that was implemented by the Brits. Or, or the, they, they brought the trams, and the, in the beginning, in the beginning, and, and they kept it now. Like in Switzerland, you get you get one way and the other. Way. So if you have a double double train track, you see that, and yeah, you notice that while sitting in the train. And I'm commuting every day, so coming. Luckily, I have the offices very close to this main station, right? And I can have lunch here, do some photos, and yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Well, we have to stop here, I think. Okay. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Cheers.